What up everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with our area unit. Today we're going to be looking at area of irregular figures. So let's uncover our objective today. Our objective today, today I will be able to determine the area of irregular figures by decomposing them into rectangles and finding the area of each rectangle. So very similar to what we did last lesson, except today our rectangles won't be covered with unit squares. We're just going to give you the dimensions and we're going to have to learn how to decompose those into rectangles. So last lesson we learned that area was additive. So here's an example problem that we did last lesson, right? And we learned that we can split this apart, this irregular figure, into different rectangles. We can find the area of each of them. So this one was 20, this one was 20, and this one was 10. And you can add those together to find the area of the total shape so that area of the total shape here is 50 square units. This is what we did last lesson. We gave you the unit squares that covered the irregular figure. And to do that, we had three steps that we talked about. Our first step is to decompose the irregular figure into rectangles. Step number two, you're gonna find the area of each rectangle. And step number three, you're going to add those areas together. Just like I just showed you, we decomposed it into different rectangles. We found the area of each one last lesson by counting the unit squares, and then we added the total area together. So here we have the same question, right? This is the same exact question we just solved. We have our dimensions labeled, we split them apart, and, and we are able to find the area. Now the difference between last lesson and today is we no longer have the unit squares that cover it. So we're gonna have irregular shapes, that we're gonna have to use the dimensions they give us to find the area. Now we already know the area of the shape, right? That we figured out the area of the shape was 50 square units. But if we didn't have the unit squares covering it, how do we figure this out? Well, we have the same exact steps. We're gonna decompose it into the separate rectangles. So we have one, two, and three. And then we need to find the area of each rectangle. Now this time we're gonna have to use our area formula. So our two dimensions for this rectangle are five, and four, so we're gonna have area equals five times four, and my area for this one was 20 square units, okay, square units. Here, we have one dimension being five, okay, but we don't have the second dimension right here showing, because we can't say it's two. Two is only from this point to this point. We have to know the entire width of this. So here is a key thought, you can see it down here. If you're missing a side, you wanna look opposite and parallel. Let me show what I mean by that. We're looking for this side right here, okay? We know from here to here is two, but we don't have this side. Let's look opposite parallel, because if we remember our properties and attributes of rectangles and squares, the opposite sides are congruent to each other. So if we look opposite parallel, we find that from here to here is also two. So if we label this as two right there, that gives us a total length of four. So to find our area formula, we have five times four. And again, this one is going to be 20 square units. So looking opposite parallel is a key idea that you may have to use. So now for our third one right here, we clearly have our width as two, but I don't have my length, okay? because my length is not 10, we can't overlap. If you use the 10 down here, what you're telling me is that you combine the two lengths of rectangle number two and rectangle number three. When you split apart our irregular figures, they cannot overlap. So we need to know what is the length from here to here, or from this point to this point. So we're gonna use our opposite parallel knowledge to help us out. So if I look opposite parallel, I know that from here to here is 10, okay? If I look opposite parallel, I see that this side right here is opposite, or is parallel, and this side right here is also parallel. So from here to here is going to be five because that's what the opposite parallel my congruent sides of my rectangle told me, which means what does this part have to be? Well, if I know the whole thing was 10, this part is five, five plus what equals 10? Oh yeah, another five, which means my length here 
is going to be five units because I looked opposite parallel. So now to find my area, I'm doing five times two, which is 10 square units. And then area is additive. So I add them all together and I still get 50. So it's a little bit easier when they have them covered with unit squares because you don't have to worry about looking opposite parallel. You can just count the unit squares. But let's do another one together. Here we have a concrete patio and I want to know the total area of the patio. So my statement's going to say the total area of the patio is blank and then my units are feet, so square feet, okay? So again, you could separate this any way you want as long as you have non-overlapping rectangles. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to split them all the same way and I'm going to make a top rectangle, a middle rectangle, and this bottom rectangle. So I have one, two, three rectangles that I just split my irregular figure into. So now if I want to know the area of each one, I need to find my length and width. I need my two dimensions. So this top one's easy because I have four here and 10 here. And when I do my area formula of 10 times four, I get a total area of 40 square feet. So now I need to figure out the area of this second rectangle, okay? So I need to know my length and my width, all right? Now I can't use 12. Because again, 12 would be overlapping. 12 goes from here to here, right? I only want to know from here to here. So I'm going to look opposite parallel. And if you look right here, it tells me that this side is 4. So I know my width is going to be 4. I don't know my length right here though, okay? And again, if I look opposite parallel, I can't say it's 10 because 10 was from here to here. I'm just looking for this small part. I can, however, though, use my opposite parallel knowledge because if I know that from here to here is 5, well, 5 plus 5 would give me 10, which means this part has to be 5. So when I multiply 5 times 4, I get 20 square feet. Okay, so now I know 40 square feet and 20 square feet. Now I just need to find the area of number 3. And this one, again, is pretty easy because I know that my width is 4. Now here is a misconception a lot of people might do. They might pick five, okay? But you want to know the length of the entire rectangle. If you pick the five, the five only goes from this part to this part, not the entire length. So I'm not gonna use this five, I'm actually gonna use the 10 as my length because that would be the entire rectangle. Make sure you look at the numbers and what they mean before you just rush through and pick a number that doesn't make any sense. So here, if I was trying to find out how many square units cover this, I would have 10 groups of four, which gives me an area of 40 square feet. And now I know areas additive, so I'm gonna add them all together. And I'm going to get the answer of 40 plus 40 plus 20 gives me the answer of 100. So I have 100 square feet is my total area. Go ahead and try the U-Try problem. Now for this one, I believe if you split up correctly, I have labeled all the parts that you're going to need. You just have to be careful about the numbers you pick. If you are ready to try this one by yourself, you can go ahead and push pause, then push play, and we can check your work together. If you're not there yet, that's okay. We can do it together as another we do problem. So hopefully you just paused it and now you're checking your work. So my statement's going to say, I need blank one inch squares to cover the shape. And again, I, when I go back and identify, I know when they're asking me for one inch squares, they're really saying, okay, if you had unit squares, how many would you need to cover the shape? So these are key words that help you know you're doing area. So now I know that I need to decompose my shape into rectangles. So I'm gonna split it horizontally here to make this smaller one and this larger one. Now again, when you're picking your dimensions for each rectangle, you gotta make sure that you don't overlap. So if you picked 12 for either one of these, that would be incorrect because 12 is overlapping. You want to make non-overlapping rectangles, which means you want to use the four and the three as your length and the width. And when you do the area for number one, I'm gonna write it over here now. So area of rectangle number one, is going to be three groups of four. So my area for number one is going to be 12 square inches, okay? And now if I want to do number two, again, I don't want the 12 because that'd be overlapping. I see right here that my width is eight, okay? And I can see that that's very clearly my dimension for this side. But now I have a seven and a 10. Again, you want to pick the one that's going to be the entire length of the rectangle. If I pick a seven, that only goes from this part to this part. It's not the entire length. 
I want to come down in here and pick the 10 as my second dimension. So now my area formula is length times width. I have 10 groups of 8, which gives me 80 square inches as my second area. I'm not done yet because I now I have to add them together. So if I have my two areas, I know area is additive. When I add them together, I'm going to have a total of 92 square inches, which means I would need 92 one inch squares to cover the shape completely. So again, what we want you to take with you from this lesson is area is additive. It doesn't matter if the irregular shape is covered with unit squares already, like last lesson, or not covered at all, like this lesson, you still decompose them into non-overlapping rectangles. You find the area of each rectangle, and then you add those areas together. That will tell you the total area of the irregular figure. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to check out Instruct the Beats today. We appreciate you spending your time with us. We hope you'll check out our area and perimeter song, our other area lessons, and all of our other awesome resources that we offer. We would love to have you like and subscribe to our channel. Join our Instruct the Beats family. Again, thank you so much. Instruct the Beats, out.